Okay, frequently uh, we need to forecast into the future. We want to see, well, we want to predict what's going to happen in the future. So we, now we need to use a number of forecasting techniques, which include uh, expert, expert opinions, surveys and market designs, surveys of spending plans, economic indicators, projection, time series projection, or other econometric methods, models. Okay, the subject forecast could be something like a GDP, could be an industry level, industry sales, sales of a particular product within the industry. It could be firm level, like firms sales revenue, costs, expenses, employment requirement, etc. etc. And we want uh, our forecast to be good, so to be consistent, plausible in the context, to be based on adequate knowledge of the, of the relevant past, to, be, to consider the economic and political environment, and definitely timely. All right, forecasting, there are different approaches to to forecasting, it could be quality, it's just based on judgments of individuals or groups. It could be quantitative, utilized substantial amounts of previous prior data. The forecasting could be, the forecasting methods could be naive. So just simply based on the trend projections of the past and the future without explaining what's happening. It could be causal, so it's more explanatory methods, trying to explain the relationship among the variables. All right, quickly go through the list. Jury ex expert opinions, one of them is jury of executive opinions. Just ask people uh, uh, that who are expert, who are expert on this area to do uh, to, to, to make a call, to make judgments. And a variation is, is called Delphi methods. So using a ser series of written questions and answers to obtain a consensus forecast. Uh, we can also have opinion polls. It's a forecasting method in which sample populations are surveyed to determine consumption trends. And in, po in politics, like uh, if we have an election coming up, there's going to be a lot of opinion polls regarding who is going to win in the elections. Okay, uh, we can also sur do surveys of spending plans. It seeks information uh, about Micro type, micro type data relating to the economy, like consumers and intention, um, inventories and the sales expectation, capital expenditure surveys, so on and so forth. Uh, sometimes we can use economic indi indicators, uh, particularly the leading economic indicators, to for our to forecast into the, in the, in the, in the future. Uh, Or we can simply project the trending. It's a form of a naive forecasting that projects trends from the past data. For example, like a compounding, compound growth rate, visual time series projections, least square time series projections. Uh, an example over here, like, okay, uh, beginning value is 10. We think that the growth rate is going is going to be I say 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 twenty uh, percent one of twenty well say twenty percent could be you know and then then B times one plus twenty percent raised to the power of five in five years times we can have 
uh, value is. Okay. Uh, we can also examine the, the the trending of a time series by using least square methods. For example, we can decompose a time series into trends, cyclical fluctuations, seasonal fluctu fluctuations, and irregular movements. Uh, it has some advantage like this. So basically here, here is a, a time series. We can decompose what he is the time series. We decompose into TT train component, CT cyclical component, ST seasonal component, RT the random one, and uh, using OLS to estimate these different components. A frequently used um, method is moving average. So, so we have a time series. It contains uh, quite a few uh, uh, random components quite a few seasonalities and we want to get if we in a sense these components they are not not quite important to us so we want to get rid of them and one technique of doing so is moving average so to isolate so we can use this moving average to isolate out or smooth out seasonal or cyclical fluctuations so Basically, it's just average. Say, say four, four, four months moving average. So average of month one, month two, month three, month four. And then average of month two, month three, month four, month five, so on and so forth. That's why it's called moving average. All right, then using the moving average, using the series after moving average, then we can run a regression to estimate the time trends, like this. All right, so let's a uh, brief uh, introduction of forecasting in case uh, you might need to use them in your, uh, for your purpose. And we gotta be clear about the, what the items we want to forecast, the relation between the benefit of this forecast and the cost associated with them and the historical data that we can ha have and the time allowed to prepare the